Hey, Fabulous! So, welcome or welcome back to Fair From Friday. For the first case for this week, we are going back to Germany. Apparently, this is a pretty well-known case over there in Germany. Uh, not very as much well, not very as well-known over here in the States. Um, this is said to have kind of been like a controversial case in Germany. Of course, I definitely support like what the killer did. This is one of the few cases where I should agree with of why the killer killed our victim because our victim isn't really a victim if that makes sense and so of course once i get to the story you'll understand what i'm trying to say and so i'm gonna give what i can because like i said most of the story apparently was in german and someone else had translated over so i'm giving what is translated over and so with that being said let's go and get started so marianne bachmeyer was born on june 3rd 1950. apparently her mother was like very religious and when it seemed like she didn't work um, her father, of course, like I said, this took place in Germany. She was born in 1950, so you already know he was serving as a Nazi. And apparently he was, like, a very heavily drinker. And that was his day of way of dealing with, like, life after the war. So then, of course, the mom decided she wasn't having it. She gets remarried to this man named Paul Wise. Uh, Marianne didn't like him either. And apparently she refused to call him her stepfather and referred to him as Uncle Paul instead. Marianne gets pregnant at 16, and apparently Paul kicks her out for this. So, of course, the mother, uh, even though she's kicked out because she's, like, 16... Um, the mother also doesn't want her to be homeless, and apparently Marianne has sisters, so she would have, like, her sisters go bring Marianne some food for her and the baby. So then after she gets birth, she's allowed to come back. However, the baby apparently slept on the kitchen table, which apparently I guess Marianne was okay with, because that was, like, better than being homeless. And so then Paul would then put her in a house of unwed mothers, because, again, she got pregnant out of wedlock, and, you know, back then, Kansas, this is, like, 1966, so Kansas would be doing that. So then, of course, uh, the boyfriend would sadly leave her, and she puts this child up for adoption. She gets pregnant again at 18, and this boyfriend actually proposed, so I guess he wanted to, like, make it right. Like, well, I did get you pregnant, so I at least gotta marry you, like, to keep your honor. And so, uh, she rejects that proposal. Sadly, it is said that shortly before the birth of the second child, the child does survive, but it said that she was sadly raped. It didn't say what exactly happened to the person who raped her, but apparently she had been raped. So then she gives birth to the second child. Paul's stepfather dies. So then she moves back in with the family and apparently raises this child for a little bit. So at age 22, Marianne gets pregnant again. So now it's her third pregnancy. She gets married by, by a name named Christian. So we just have a father for, okay. So then Christian apparently is happy to be a dad. So now it seems like a chain of events. However, Marianne wanted to go back to baby day number two. However, baby day number two apparently had tried to rape her and leave her, like, dump her off somewhere. It wasn't successful, but he had tried to and then proceeds to, like, leave her somewhere, from what it sounds like, right? So then, of course, baby number two is then put up for adoption by her father's parents. Not Marianne's dad, but, like, the father of that child, their parents, like, yeah, it's best to just put the child for adoption. So then apparently Christian, apparently he has, like, a bar. He owns a bar. Marianne's working there. That's how she's getting income. He asked her to apparently marry a chef because apparently the chef was like an elite, like an illegal immigrant and was at fear of getting deported. But if I get married, I can stay in the country, the country being Germany, right? And it didn't say whether or not they actually got married, but I feel like had she actually married the dude, it would have said, oh, they got married on da-da-da. And so, yeah, we don't know what happened to the chef when he got deported. We don't know that. But what is known is that Christian, because like I said, she was pregnant, right? She gives birth to Anna, the subject of our story. November 14th, 1972. So then, of course, she decides, yeah, we're done, uh, three and done, we're, like, we're done, you know? So she goes, which I didn't know was the option back then, but apparently she went and got her tubes tied, because she was like, we don't want no more kids, we've seen what the first two did to me. It's a wrap. And so then Marianne's over here working overnight shifts at this bar to pr provide food for her daughter, for Anna, right? We have a name now. And apparently Anna was, like, at home by herself, like, sleeping. And there'll be other nights where she would actually bring Anna to the bar with her. So then, of course, Anna will be sleeping at the bar because you can't leave a whole last child at home by themselves, especially that young. So then on May 4th, 1980, apparently Marianne and Anna got into an argument. They went to sleep that night, woke up May 5th, which apparently was a school day. They come, um, Anna has to go to school. Marianne obviously has, like, adult shit to do. A Anna apparently leaves the house and apparently she goes out to play instead of going to school. Because apparently she's, like, seven, right? And like I said, Marianne overslept, so she didn't realize that Anna didn't go to school that day until, like, later. So then apparently in Marianne's plans that day, she had a photo shoot with uh, some, a magazine that wanted to take a picture of her van. Because apparently they, like, really liked her van. So she had a, that photo shoot scheduled. She also met with some friends that apparently were interested in adopting Anna. Because I guess she realized that maybe I'm not fit to be a mother. And it's best to give my child a better home. 
which considering all these child death cases I've covered, I mean, you gotta give credit that she knew she wasn't the best fit parent, right? And so it's not till later that she realizes that Anna hadn't come home yet. So she's thinking, oh, well, we did have arguments the night before, so maybe she went to her friend's house because she's still mad at me because, you know, children, they're petty like that. So then she goes to where all the friends help, not all of Anna's known friends, and it's like, hey, any else in Anna, and none of them have seen Anna. So then, of course, Marianne starts freaking out, and she reports Anna missing. Um, a woman would later come to the police station and say that her husband, Claus Grabowski, had confessed to killing Anna. And apparently... Klaus Grabowski, we don't have a date of birth on him. In 1973, uh, Klaus basically gets arrested for attempted murder after he apparently had raped a nine-year-old girl. She uh, had ran away screaming, understandably, because she knows she's trying to scream for help. He apparently catches up to her, and he attempts to strangle her. She's still screaming. Of course, he eventually gets caught and is only sentenced to probation. So then in 1975, he then goes on to rape two girls and was convicted the following year. He was given the choice between life in prison and chemical castration. So basically they like cut off the hormones and like your penis to hope that you stop like raping people and shit. So then he chooses a castration and then he goes to try to get the reverse because apparently there weren't checks to see if the effects were actually working. Those weren't required and apparently he went to a doctor and the doctor apparently is like supposed to check like make sure you're not a sexual offender and he was so he shouldn't have been eligible to get it. But the doctor gave it to him anyway not knowing of his history. I guess his criminal history. So then the wife, uh, she's being asked what happened. And so this is the story that we have based off the wife. And the wife has the story apparently from Claus because she was at work. So basically what happened was she's at work. She's not here. So she, this is all Claus's word that he told her later. So Anna was supposed to go to school because again, she's seven. Um, Claus apparently sees her and lures her in the house with the promise of some cats. Because apparently... There were, like, some cats that he had that apparently she had pet them in the past. And apparently, like, again, she's seven. She's a child. She doesn't know that to stay away from this man. Anyway, so then he gets her in the house with the palms of these cats. He apparently strangles her with his wife's tights. So then, and then he, and then apparently her body is still there when the wife gets home. She apparently leaves, understandably, like, out of shock. And then he decides to take this time to bury Anna's body in a cardboard box and put her by, by a canal. Okay, so she came back. Claus... And Claus was gone, because like I said, he was disposing of Anna's body. He left a note saying, meet me at 10.30 p.m. at this restaurant, because I need you now more than ever. And so then she tells police this, thank God. And then, I guess they weren't thinking he would actually show up. He actually did show up, because I think he was only expecting his wife and not the police. And so, luckily, he is arrested. And he tells police that, yes, I did bring Anna in the house, but that she had pretty much tried to blackmail me. So if I, if I didn't give her $5, because, you know, kids like money... If I didn't give her $5, she would tell people that I had raped her. And then apparently he would also try to say that Anna has tried to seduce him. Even though, again, Anna is literally seven years old. This is a grown man we're talking about here. And so then, of course, police asked, did you ever violate Anna dead or alive? Not that it makes it any better, but, like, we need to know. Could you know with your, with your history and shit. With kids and shit. And, of course, he denies this. Um, they do eventually find Anna's body. Whether she had been violated is not said in the records well the type of man Claus is you gotta always assume the worst so then Anna's body apparently uh was found hogtied so apparently he hogtied her before he disposed of her body Mary Ann obviously being the mother and legal guardian of Anna she's supposed to come identify the body to verify this is in fact her daughter she didn't want to speak to police and she refused to even look at the body so then of course unfortunately police will start looking at her like were you involved in this murder we need to stop looking at Claus start looking at you obviously she wasn't involved she was out doing other shit when this stuff happened but yeah but Claus would eventually get arrested and charged with murder so on the faithful day of March 6 1981 while I'm even making this video in the first place apparently it is the third day of trial Marianne pulls up in a little I want to call it like black a uh, brown kind of like trench coat with like the jackets open and apparently she has like a gun in there because apparently again this is the 80s they ain't got the little uh, metal detectors like we do now in, in the courtroom. So she goes and shoots Claus from behind, killing him, like shoot, shooting him seven times. Obviously, of course, killing him. So then, of course, she is quickly detained. She don't even try to resist arrest. She's arrested. She is released. 
but would try to commit suicide several times. So then, of course, she's put into a mental institution until her trial can start. Because now you done killed our this person. So now we're going to have a whole new trial just because, you know, yeah. So then, of course, at trial, Marianne apparently didn't even know this. But she found out after she had killed Claus that she that he was going to try to make Anna look like a seducer. Even though, again, she's seven. And basically play the victim card. And she didn't find this out until after he had died. And apparently she would later claim that she made her... Like, her, one of her regrets was that she didn't see his face when she shot him. But she couldn't, like, in the face, she shot him from behind, right? And so, the gun, where the gun come from? She was saying that the gun came from a regular of the bar that she worked at. And this was apparently was never confirmed. But that's the story that she gave. So then, a psychologist would try to test to see if, like, this was um, premeditated or a heat of a moment. Like, heat of a moment being second degree, premeditated being first degree, but you brought a whole ass gun inside of a federal building, such as a courtroom, um, you definitely would have got charged with first degree. But anyway, they gave her a paper, and this is what's so sad. They gave her a paper, and on the paper she wrote, I did it for you, Anna, and it said, and then right below that, apparently it had, like, seven hearts. Because, again, Anna, set, she only made it to seven years old, and then also she saw, she saw claws several, seven times. So there's some people thinking that's one for every bullet. Or the hearts are for one year, for one year to Anna live, since she only made a seven. So then, of course, prosecutors, uh, they're trying to say that Marianne was a narcissist, that she wasn't the best mother. She even acknowledged that, yeah, I wasn't the best mother, hence why I was trying to put my child in adoption. And that she was a narcissist, and that she only killed Claus because Claus had killed her daughter. Which, I mean, yeah, wouldn't you? But, like, no, she, they're basically trying to say that Anna was property of M Marianne, and so now that her property is now dead... I gotta kill the man who killed my property. So then fast forward like a whole two years after this murder, March 2nd, 1983, so almost two years, they sentenced her to six years. She only serves three on manslaughter charges. She gets out. She sells her story to like a German magazine for like a quarter of a million duché, which is German currency. Because like I said, this took place in Germany. And then she used the money that she got from selling her story to pay off legal fees because I imagine even back then, legal fees are expensive because lawyers got to make that good money somehow. So then, of course, uh, Marianne and Christian, being the parents of Anna, they go and find the doctor who gave Claus the um, the treatment to reverse his chemical castration and say, like, you know, you should have checked and had you seen he was he was a sexual predator, like legally you weren't supposed to give it him, you know, that type of stuff. And then, of course, the case was dismissed. So they didn't get anything out of that. Marianne would get remarried to apparently a school teacher. She moved to Nigeria with him. They get divorced and she moves to Sicily, Italy. So then apparently in her last days, she asked, she would get pancreatic cancer, unfortunately. And then she would ask like a news crew to basically like come see her. Just, I guess like show like her last days. I didn't see the documentary because apparently it's only available in German in German, and I obviously don't speak German. So yeah. Um, but of course, Marianne would sadly die on September 17th, 1996, and she at least was buried next to Anna. But then apparently, like, she, like, apparently when she bought the grave for Anna, she bought, like, a double grave, and she'd indicate that she was gonna die soon after Anna did. So, yeah, so they're, apparently, they're buried next to each other, so she did at least get that wish, but apparently she wouldn't be buried somewhere else. And I don't, I, I don't know why they couldn't bury her somewhere else, but they was like, yeah, you get to be buried next to your daughter. So, they're both now deceased and they're both buried next to each other. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, not a very well-known case. Uh, definitely not below. I definitely support Marianne shooting Claus. But, yeah. Uh, that's just my opinion, of course. Um, was Marianne the best mother? No. But at least she acknowledged it. At least she was trying to, like, change, make the life better for Anna and the other kids. Where are the other kids at that got adopted? You're probably wondering. I mean, this they were born in, like, the 60s. So, it's they should still be alive right now. Do they know that Marianne's their mother? Probably not. If they found out, would they ever come out and say, yeah, that's my mom? Maybe. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I doubt any of y'all knew anybody involved in this case, but if you definitely know, uh, let me know what you think down below. Would you have done the same thing to Claus had you been Marianne? And with that being said, that's all I have for this video. I'm here for you guys three times every Friday. Subscribe for more Fatal Fleet emails, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!
So if I play dead, will you regret everything that you did that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing. And my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing. Sitting there, gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free But if I lay it down and I play dead and I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think it's something Okay, bye.